Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the same old Arsenal podcast. It's been a little while, but as you can see, we're back with a bang. Got a whole array of guests. We've got the whole crew here today to discuss Sunday's game at the Etihad. The small matter of Arsenal travelling to Manchester City and to help me in dissecting what should be, well, hopefully a game for the ages, hopefully in Arsenal's favour, is Chris Howard. How are you doing, mate? I'm all right, mate. You all right? You surviving? Getting by, mate. Getting by. Just uh, just waiting for reality to set in. Um, should be should be an interesting one on Sunday. How are you doing, Amanda? I'm good. Yeah, nice and early. Get it done. Ready for Good Friday and very excited about the match. Yeah, of course. Good Friday, four day weekends. I mean, what could what could possibly go wrong, JJ? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking if we combine everybody's age of everyone here on the panel, I think that's the last time we won at the A had. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so say rude. that. Don't <laughs> and to leave it on a more positive spin, um, Melvin, great to have you back on the show, mate. Always a pleasure. Uh, I know you're a man of wisdom, so give give us some positivity heading into this game. This is the first time in about 10 years we've gone to an away team in the top three that I'm actually not that bothered. And I'm not normally like that. I'm not, as James knows, I'm not normally like that. No, I'm not that bothered. I'm just going to go. I think we can actually enjoy the game on Sunday, which we've never been able to do before. I'm not sure I can share the sentiment that <laughs> no. I'm not that bothered. I, I, I'm quite bothered to go be on, fair. Melvin. Go on, Melvin. Yeah, no, fair, fair play to you, Melvin. I wish I was a bit more relaxed about it, but as the uh, the hours draw in, um, the time gets closer. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm starting to pace a little bit about this one. Um, before we go on to talk about the Man City game, um, I do want to touch very quickly on something that isn't related to the game. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you guys saw Richarlison's interview with ESPN. Um, very, very powerful interview where he was talking about his struggles with mental health uh, post the World Cup and just on camera, you know, really emotional. Um, and I think you know, obviously, it's it, it, it's you know, we don't talk about Spurs. Um, we don't like to, but I think it's really important to highlight an issue like that and for a player like Richarlison to c- come out and openly talk about it. Um, I think it's just brilliant. I don't know if you guys have got any thoughts on that. I've not seen it. What's it about? It's just him talking about um, some mental health issues he had during the World Cup uh, or after the World Cup when he came back talking about, you know, he was at his peak performance, um, but he just wasn't feeling you know in the right headspace he was suffering a lot of panic attacks um and I think it's just just interesting for a footballer to come out and talk so openly about you know generalized anxiety oh well no I haven't seen it I will read it but I would think a lot of players do suffer um suffer in silence because I think a lot of the general public think they've got such a great life and why, you know, what's wrong with you? Why should you suffer? And it it, it will do good for other players to be able to speak about it. And good, good on you, Carlison. I haven't read it, but I can imagine how hard it must have been for him to say it. Yeah, and that's exactly what he was saying in the interview. You know, he was at the peak of his powers. Um, you know, he's got plenty of money in the bank, but just because he's got those things doesn't mean that it's necessarily easy for him. So I think it's definitely important to look at that other side of the coin and face facts that you know not all footballers just because they they're playing you know really well or they're earning loads of money mean they have it easy but let's leave it let's leave the negatives there because we've got a big game to discuss that's coming up on Sunday um Melvin I'll come back to you City away at the Etihad I mean I, I really wish I could take your stance of feeling not bothered about it, but it's uh, it's a game that I think is going to stress a lot of Arsenal fans out. And it's certainly a fixture that has a lot of bad memories, um, you know, given that we we lost there last season. It was kind of where the, the nail was put in the coffin. Still have nightmares of Haaland taking his hairband out as he, uh, you know, twirled away and scored that fourth goal. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm nervous, mate. I'm very nervous. Well, I think... What I'm trying to say is for the first time, I don't think any of us will be watching the game through our fingers like we've done the last few years. Also, I don't think we're worried about the goals that City may score. We're worried about the result. Of course we are. But every time we go up there, we're thinking, let's keep it at three. Let's keep it at three. As, as we kick off, we're going, it's nil-nil. Let's keep it like this. And as the game goes on, we just, please, keep it at three. Those thoughts are completely out of my head. Also, when we normally play City, and they play when they play any other team, they have 80% of the game. They ain't going to get 80% of the game. 
I think if we just take the game to them, I don't mean attack the whole time. I mean, show them a little bit less respect that other teams do because we are on their level now, which I never thought I'd say. We are definitely on their level. So if we play our game, I'm not that I'm not that bothered. We can score against because their defence is world class. People say, but they never defend because they don't have to. They are so good. Their midfield and attack takes so much of the ball. You don't really see them under pressure. They'll probably be under pressure with us. So I'm just going to sit back, relax, and watch it. And I believe <laughs> I know I believe I've seen loads of games like this. I believe I'll be up and hopefully take a cigar out at the end of it at the game because I think it, it could be one of those games. And I'm going for I'm, I'm I think we could we I'm going for a two 0 mate. I really do. Do you got me? I, I really do because I'm not one of those guys. You know, James knows what I'm like. I'm not one of those guys that goes gun out. We're going to do this. I never do. I'm very reserved. But there's just I'm just adding it all up. It might go all wrong. I don't know what I'm doing this afternoon, so I can't foresee the future but I just think that if we do what we can do we don't even have to worry about who is playing with them or who isn't playing I think we can do it I really do and I think that we can show the football public what we're all about because they're all expecting us to fail if if we get get a freaky result one nil defend for nine, uh, 89 minutes and nick a one we'll be happy of course we will but everyone goes lucky ass look at that but if we take the game to them like I know we can do People will sit up and go, you know what? They ain't that bad, are they? Anyway, that's what I think. Yeah, and I think it's very unlikely that we'll go to the Etihad and put in the sort of performance where we are going to be backs against the walls and we'll, we'll get a lucky goal. I mean, I'm not saying it won't happen. City are formidable on their day. They could put in the sort of performance where we're pinned up against it. But I think what we showed in the two games we've already played against City this season, even going back to the Community Shields, I think we've been the better team in both of those games. We reduced them to zero shots on target in the game at home. I thought we were very unfortunate to be losing the Community Shield for the majority of the game. We managed to turn it around and win it. And I think we stand the best possible chance, Chris, of going to the Etihad and getting a result in this game. Because look at last season, no William Saliba. We were going there with Rob Holding. We've got, you know, we, we know we have a few injury concerns, but we know we're going there with a more or less very fit squad. Um even going back to seasons before that, we've missed players like Thomas Partey. Uh, even the, the game at home last season where we had Partey out, Jorginho coming in quite early on in his Arsenal career. It, it always feels like we've been handicapped when we come up against them. Even Saka missed his only Premier League game of the season against them at home. I mean, how ironic would it be if he missed the away game as well? Uh, fingers crossed that isn't the case. But to go there with a team that should be near fully fit, I mean, th this is the best chance we've got of going there and getting a win, isn't it? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Do you know one of the things that I do in, in the run-up to these sort of games, well, in, in the run-up to all of the games, but in the run-up to these sort of games, I start to try and sort of uh, envelope myself in like data and information to make myself be feel better. So am I right to just hit you with a few numbers that I'm hoping are going to make people feel a bit better? Um, XG against. So um, the expected goals. I know, Amanda, we've talked about this before. So uh, try and try and keep up. <laughs> um <laughs> The uh, the expected goals against stuff. So, so in other words, how many goals are we supposed to have conceded this season? Away from home, Arsenal, 9.9, top of the league. Next is Man City on 16.3. So basically, we are, we're like six goal difference in terms of how many goals we're expected to concede compared to any other team. And compared to Brighton, who are next, it's 20. It's, it, it, our defence is genuinely staggering. And it's when you start looking at numbers like that that you realise this is a really good team. And to go back to your point, last season, Rob Holding and Gabriel at the heart of the defence and Man City knew that and they decided, right, well, we know what Rob Holding is. We're going to go long. We're going to go long against them and we're going to try and isolate Holding and Haaland. And they had a field day. Haaland and De Bruyne had an absolute field day. And then are they going to be able to go long again against Saliba? Because Saliba is strong, physical, fast, and he can he can cover it. He can cover the likes of Haaland. I mean, they've got so much talent. They've got so much quality all over the pitch that it's going to be hard. But I look at some of the numbers of our defence. And then also you add the goals that we've been scoring as well. And I'm just trying to find reasons. I guess I'm trying to say I'm trying to find reasons for optimism in the data. And that it is actually there. You Literally, guys, go and have a look on FB Ref and just look at some of the stats and stuff. And it will make you feel better. 
Yeah, some very interesting points from Chris there. Um, JJ, I said before I came to Chris, you know, this is our best chance to win at the Etihad. But also, it's really important that we don't lose this game. Um, a draw is by no means a bad result if we were to go there. I think a lot of people are optimistic that we can get a win. I personally would be, I won't say elated with a draw, but I'd certainly be more than satisfied with one, given that if we let them win, that really gives them you know, a foundation to go on and, and do what they normally do at this time of the season and go on their 10-game winning run. So how important is it that we don't just focus on winning the game, which obviously is important and we all want to see Arsenal do, but how important is it to also focus on making sure that we come out of there at least with a point as the bare minimum? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, the main, it's the main scope of the game. Um, it, 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 I, of course, would love to make a statement to all these, you know, phonies, as I like to call them, that are getting shared around all the big media companies. Because I think, like Melvin said earlier, if Arsenal go to the Etihad and win, what more can you throw at this Arsenal team? They'll probably go, oh, look at them at the end, because we'll probably celebrate that quite a bit, which rightfully so. Um, and they'll probably be like, oh, look at this lot going for it again. And I'm like, well, if you can't celebrate beating the treble winning team in their own patch after, God, I think it's 2015 was the last time, wasn't it? It was the Giroud um, goal, wasn't it? I think and the, the game went. Yeah, yeah. where Kazola turned into. 18th like, of January 2015. <clears throat> thank you very much. There we go. So for me, I think if you come out there with any form of a positive result, that's massive. That is absolutely massive. And. Chris was going on about his numbers. I'll throw one out to you. Every time Arsenal's won the Premier League, they've won nine consecutive games. We are currently on eight. So wow. there you go. One more win. Spicy, James. <laughs> yeah, Spicy. I yeah, love it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, I think whoever does win that game on Sunday does win the title. I think it's that I think it's that important. Because I think the momentum completely swings with that side. And I don't, and I don't see either of them dropping it from there. So, but I, of course, I'm thinking it's going to be Arsenal, and I'm also hoping it's going to be Arsenal. But yeah, James, I've got no, you know, all this week I've seen about all these players that oh, you know, this one conveniently, I mean, Sky, Sky Sports News has to change their name now from News to Sky Sports Anti Arsenal Opinions because there was nothing about all these Man City players. Yeah, it was everything about the art. I mean, Trent Alexander-Arnold, I said it earlier when we come on, if we had all our combined ages, that's probably the last time. If we had all our combined ages, that's probably the last time Trent Alexander-Arnold played for England. Because he's always conveniently picking up an injury whenever England duty comes around. So I don't understand when an Arsenal player does it. Oh, it's the end of the world. I mean, Jeff Stelling, I used to love Jeff Stelling. But the way he's gone about Ben White playing Uno, absolute clown. What are you? We know why he's not there, yet he's still pumping this whole anti. I mean, like you know, like the outrage with this England shirt stuff. You're pumping this. You're anti-English because you don't want to play for the England team. No, he doesn't get along with senior figures that are within. What does that make him? You know, I'm I'm the worst person to talk about patriotism because the world's round to me. So, but at the same point. I'm like, he's not anti-English just because he doesn't want to play for Gareth. I don't want to play for Gareth Southgate. And <laughs> <laughs> does, what, does that make me hate England all of a sudden? No. Just, they're, they're, I, I can't abide it. I can't abide it. Just, James, you've been in the game long enough. You know, you've done some great, you've done great stuff with all your documentaries previously. Over, but this is the lowest form of journalism. And Sky, has, they're, they're the top tier. I mean, talk sport, I'm not going to say talk sport at the top tier, but Sky are like the pinnacle of, for our generation, James, all we've pretty much had was Sky. We've not had anything else. You know, we grew up on it. Oh, I don't and know, mate. Just... I, I did enjoy CFAX back in the day. Well, there you go. But I'm like, you're just diminishing it on a day-by-day -day basis with this with this tosh. And, it, and it's because Arsenal fans are reactionary and we will click on it and everything else. But I just I don't understand it, and I, and for me I'm like, where if and when we win on Sunday, I want to see what they're going to say then, because how much more has this team and this manager got to do before we actually get some credit in the bank? Yeah, and I think 
if you want to keep your sanity as an Arsenal fan, do not go on Talk Sport, Sky Sports, anywhere where they could, you know, potentially look to berate us. But make sure you do get your Arsenal content from the wonderful team at the Same Old Arsenal podcast. And plenty of other podcasts are available. And I'm sure some of you guys have seen that fantastic clip from um, Clive Palmer uh, yeah. on the yeah, brilliant, brilliant, just really rational, calm, just, just oozes class when he was on there. Carragher put to him uh, about this, you know, being such a massive game for Arsenal. Um, and Amanda, I'm not sure if you've seen that clip, but do you share the same sentiment as Clive? You know, just got to relax, take it one game at a time, um, play our game and just make sure that we don't lose it. Everything Clive says, everything. I sit there in admiration of everything uh, he's always Callum saying. Chambers is the new Busquets. <laughs> do you agree with that one? No, uh, well, James, but I don't remember him saying that. Um, I've been on loads of pods with Clive at the very beginning of me podcasting, and I used to sit there in awe of the man. I loved him. I still love everything he says. He's the best one to represent Arsenal fans, in my opinion. I love watching the overlap. And yes, I did watch a small clip this morning of what he said because he was getting raved about, and he said the right thing. He said, we play differently now. He said, um, you know, territorially, we can handle it. I think... I think Sunday is, um, it, I'm not confident like Melvin is, but I'm more confident than I've ever been. That, that much more. It's still massive. And the most important thing is we don't lose. That That is the most important thing. But what, whatever uh, Clive says, I go with James. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just calm, rational chat about the Arsenal. And you're, and um James down the bottom going on about Sky. So Melvin and I, and probably maybe Chris, we can remember that we had uh, we didn't have Sky, but we were still disliked. Just trust me on that. We were still disliked in the 70s and the 80s. And the only thing I can ever put it down to is that we were a very well-run, respected old gentleman's club, you know, the Arsenal run properly and people didn't like it and the, and the problem with it now is our fan base are very very reactionary so talk sport will do something um sky will do something gary neville does something and we're all on them and i you know i'm guilty of that sometimes especially carragher i will go for carragher every time when he says you can't celebrate um and it it's media clicks as we know and that's what gets them the advertising. I stopped listening to Talk Sport around 12 years ago when Adrian Durham at that four o'clock, what was it, the Arsenal Hour? I can't remember what it used to be called. Daily it Arsenal. Me, the Daily Arsenal. Yeah. It wound me up so much that out of all the clubs, every day was about us at an hour because he knew he'd get people like me and thousands of others going at him. I stopped for my sanity. So... The media have never liked us. I don't care. I think we are getting credit. I, I think you have to be a little bit, you know, we're not completely myopic with the media. They are giving us credit. They are liking the way we're playing. They're liking the way mm -hmm. um, Arteta's changed it. But for us to get credit, James, you asked how. We've got to win. We've got to win a cup. You've got to win the league. You've got to win the Champions League. He's not going to get credit otherwise because all they'll do is look to Pep and all they'll do is look to Klopp as well. And 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 he's in their eyes, he's not in that league yet. And I get that. He's not in that league yet. You're not in that league until you win something. If we win on Sunday, it will be that bigger stage they'll put us on. And then what will happen is the pressure will come because it will be like, where well, it's theirs to lose now. We've never had it to lose, but we, we will have a couple of points. So what we're a point ahead of City, we'll be four points ahead of City. It doesn't mean anything. we got Spurs and United. It really doesn't. But and Wolves and Brighton. As, Let's not forget yeah, them. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you know what we're like. But way back five, six games ago, the three of us and Albert, we predicted the points. I went for full points. Cooks, you went for full points. Albert and you, Chris, you thought we would lose against Newcastle. I think I was that confident then that we'd win five straight games. Obviously, we haven't played Chelsea. Chelsea was that one. Was the last one. Um, and a hundred percent, I would. If someone said to me on Sunday, we could take a draw now. I'd take a draw. Absolutely. 100%. I've been to the Etihad many times. The first time I ever went, we won. I couldn't believe it. I've been many times where we haven't. So I'll take a draw. Yep, me too. And Melvin, uh, interesting point that Amanda makes about winning a trophy. Um, I do think we are, you know, 
rival fans will obviously say I'm using this as a bit of a caveat to get out of it if we don't win something this season. But I do still believe that this Arsenal team is ahead of schedule. Uh, given what we did last season, I don't think anyone predicted us to be in a title race. You know, we went from finishing fifth to then, you know, running City right until the very end of the season. This season, we've maintained a Champions League run and a Premier League title charge for the entirety of the campaign with just two months to go. I think that's, you know, that's that's really formidable to do um, and really telling of how good this Arsenal team is at the minute. Um, but this is the point where your credentials are really tested. You know, we've got this game against City. We've got games away against United, Spurs, Wolves, Brighton. We've got Bayern Munich in the Champions League. If we get past them, the fixtures come thick and fast. We might have the likes of City to play again, Real Madrid. This is very much the business end of the season where teams really are are defined in terms of their legacy. So um, it's a big one, but I do feel like we've got to now win one of the big trophies, whether it be the Premier League or the Champions League. Because if we don't, we go back to that Spurs team that did so well um, a good few years ago when they got to a Champions League final. They did very well in the title race. They won nothing. And ultimately, no one remembers what they did. So to ensure that we aren't like that Spurs team. I feel like, like Amanda says, we've got to win something this season. We, yeah, we should. Yeah, we've got to win something, but it's not as bad. It's, this is different. We are still evolving. We aren't the finished article. There are still areas that perhaps we might be able to improve on. So I'm not too bothered about that. I want to win. Of course I want to win. Get it, you know, break the duck. Let's win the league for the first time for X amount of years. 20 odd years. But I'm not I'm not going to start panicking and crying if we don't win it because I see what this team's all about. I'm seeing football that I've never seen haven't seen for a very long time. I've seen us break down teams. I've seen teams give up against us. Just don't even bother to chase the ball against us in some games. So I'm I'm not too worried about that. Um it's just you you've got to remember go back a few years, 3 4 years who would have thought that we'd be watching a game? I, I used to be very um, jealous of other clubs the last 10 years when Man City and Man United and Liverpool played each other when there was two in the title race and going, this game, the, the title might rest on this game. And I'm sitting at home watching it, nothing to do with Arsenal, nothing to do with Arsenal. And now we're part of that, we're part of that uh, club. We are part of the Liverpools and Man United and Man City. Well, not Man United so much, but where Man United were <clears throat> and Man City's. It's great. Other supporters, I'll be watching this game, nothing to do with Arsenal and Man City, but we'll be thinking, this game is so big. Whoever's going to win this shows up. This is the team that could possibly be the one to win the league. What a great position we're in. And as I say, go back four years. And if you're going to tell me that we're going to be at that table, I'd say, don't be silly. Come on. I've seen it all before. We ain't going to be at that table. We might be the waiter giving the drinks out the table, but we're not going to be at that table. And we are there now. So just to go back to my point, if we, we, of course I want us to win it. Anything, it'd be fantastic. It'd be probably one of the best league titles we've ever won in my lifetime for, for, for what we've done against <clears throat> two juggernauts. We beat one juggernaut, Man United, the last 20 odd years. We've never had to face two at this level. So this will be one of the greatest, greatest uh, league titles, in my opinion. Well, we, we did, Mel. It... We did in 1989, and we were not uh, Liverpool. Liverpool won everything. So it's a sim- yeah, I'm saying we have beat, similar. I have said we have beaten one of the juggernauts, but not two in the same season. Oh, I That's see. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you I think you meant about, ever. <laughs> if you think about it, we are basically playing Man United's 99 team and sort of same level scope of manager, but they've got the financial backing of a state. So that's even, to me, I agree with Melvin, that's even harder. I, I thought the titles in the 90s were hard. This is even harder. And then you've got a Liverpool side as well, like Melvin said, that are just on their day. They they can, you know, if they want to, they can pump a team by six, seven, eight goals if they really want to, because again, that people just can't sustain playing against it. But it's like Melvin's has said, when was the last time you've sat there and watched Arsenal destroy teams consecutively on a week-to-week basis? You know, this one's getting six. Oh, we're handing you five. Last month. You, yeah, we, that's it. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, again, I, Melvin's so spot on, is that if if it doesn't go our way, don't go into a complete tiz because 
there is positives to take to where this team's going to go. Of course, you want to win everything, but you need to see what happens on the day and let, you know, a bit of perspective and then we'll carry on. It's, it's still a long way to go. Still a long way to go. Yeah, absolutely. And when you consider that, you know, someone like Bakayo Saka isn't even 23 yet, um, there are still levels to this team. I mean, look at how young players like William Saliba, Kivio, uh, you know, this team has got levels and gears to go up in. So, um, no, I think, yeah, you guys are definitely right in saying that if we don't win something this season, there are still positives to take because we, we are on a constant journey. Um, Chris, if we look at this game from a slightly different angle, let's say we do go to the Etihad and lose, um, we'll be two points behind City. At that point, do you think the title would be gone from a mental standpoint, that it would be so hard to, to come back from that? Or do you think, whilst there's only two points still in it, in the worst case scenario, we'd still very much be in the title race? I think, yeah, you kind of uh, uh, lead in the witness a little bit, but I, I agree with you. I do think if we, I don't think we, um, we're out of the title race if we lose on Sunday, but I do think that essentially the only way we win the league is perfection after that. I think, because if we lose on, I think we're on 64 points. If we lose on Sunday, we've got to win. If we win the next nine games, for example, I think that takes us up to 90 points. And I think 90 points wins us the league. But as you guys, you said earlier, Cooks, like you've got to go to Wolves, you've got to go to Brighton, you've got to go to Man United, you've got to go to uh, the toilet bowl. So I, I think it becomes incredibly hard. It's almost like the the one percent chance because you've got to be flawless. Um, so I think there's a psychological bit. I think that bit will impact it more than anything else. Rather than oh, it's City again and we've lost and we always lose up there. Blah 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 blah. I don't think I think Arteta's what he's been good at is is uh, instigating bounce backs whenever we've sort of lost games. So we play Luton during the week next week. And if we lose to City, I'd expect we'd get a win against Luton. I think we're then away to Brighton the following weekend. I think we'd win that as well. And then suddenly you've won back-to-back -back games and you're thinking, OK, right, well, you know, game face is on and we all feel a little bit different. But conversely, if we win this league, I'm sure Carl's put it in the bloody chat, but he's always asking that, are we, who's going to win the league? If we beat Man City on Sunday, I might actually come on this show uh, like next week. I can't make it on Sunday and actually say, I think we could do it genuinely for the first time ever on this show. I think I might actually be saying, I think we're going to win this. But it's, a lot of it's predicated on what happens on Sunday. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Amanda, I know you've got a lot of City mates that um, have been giving you their points of view on this game. What are they What are they saying? It's interesting because <clears throat> they're all very cocky and I'd like to give a little shout out to my friend Steve who has been bombarding me for the last 48 hours because he thinks it bothers me and it doesn't and it is quite funny. Bless him. Um, and he'll be standing right by the Arsenal fans or sitting by the Arsenal fans as well. Um cocky as ever I think they think they'll win it but they have come up he's already come up with an excuse this morning which did make me laugh when he said uh one moment um you're coming in oh he said you're coming into the game too confident and think because we've got players out injured you'll get a draw or win I was like who who thinks we're gonna win this I mean no Arsenal fan are gonna go 100% we're gonna win this as in like thousands and thousands of us there will be positive people of course you know we are at the best stage at the moment that we've been at in years if we're going to do it it possibly could be Sunday my only concern is we've had a break and I don't know if it's broken the momentum slightly and we don't know if Martinelli's back that's all gone quiet and as I said to him you know we've got Tommy Asu out Timber out um Martinelli hopefully no one else Tommy's we back. don't know Tommy Asu's back. Oh, well, I told him he was still injured. Um, he said, I was explaining that because we've got Stones and Walker out. You think you've won already, but that's not the case. They're, they're, they're always very strong, very cocky about their team. And to be honest, as James said, you know, why wouldn't you be when you've got a nation state behind you and can just buy who you want? And they're going to all come at me and go, you've spent 24 billion in the last six months. But what I always say to them is, and let's put your wages in this then. And, and then we'll see how much we've spent and how much you've spent. But they don't like that when you say things like that. But I do love all my city mates. But no, I'm not going to the Etihad tomorrow. I think the last four times I've been, we've lost. So, um, 
I would say that they're, they're quietly confident, more quieter than last year. Um, and I think we're more quietly confident, if you understand what I mean by that. I don't think you're going to see on social media that people are going to quote, we're going to win four and five nil, obviously. I think people are more edging for the fact that we might not lose. And that's going to be an improvement. Because if we do get a draw, it's not the end of the world. But I will say, if we do lose on Sunday, and they do what they did last year, and it was men like a men. It was like men against boys last year. We literally went into the cauldron and just capitulated in my head, in my eyes. If as long as we show a good account of ourselves and go for it and play the way we've been playing the last few months, listen to what Arteta's telling you. He uses subs when we need, um, and I will get into the teams shortly who think who should play. But I think that my concern is if we do lose. I personally think, I know it's only two points, that we would be out of the title race. And not because of how many games we've got left or the fact that we're only a point behind or two points. The momentum, the confidence will be shot. You watch the fans when we all go to the Emirates on, I think it's Wednesday evening now. You know, we've got massive games coming up. Luton, Brighton, Bayern. I mean, this is it. This is what you live for as a football fan. I'm certainly not moaning about what's coming up. And as you said, it is the business end of the season. But let's just not lose on Sunday evening. Let's keep that momentum going. If you lose on Sunday, it doesn't mean you've lost the league. If you win on Sunday, it doesn't mean the win you win the league. I know I've just sort of gone back on what I've just said, but in my personal opinion, I think it would be very hard for the confidence. It's more confidence for me. It's not points because everyone's going to go, oh, we're only a point behind two points. City don't lose many games, even though they're not playing that great and Liverpool are still in it, obviously. It is a three-horse race. It's very exciting. But what I would say is what my cup says. Keep calm and follow the Arsenal regardless. Yeah, I mean, last season when uh, obviously we did lose to City and then I can't remember if the game against the likes of Southampton when we drew 3-3 came before or after that, but it was that cluster of games where you could tell the confidence in this Arsenal team had just gone. I mean, Forest away, for example, at the end of last season was just, I mean, it just, just felt so flat. It felt like we'd really given up on things at that point in the campaign. And I would say, look, <laughs> if we do lose, I, I, I totally get that the confidence would be a big issue, but... I do think that there there is enough in this Arsenal team to potentially bounce back. And like you were saying before, Chris, um, Luton at home is that perfect game to bounce back against. Um, you know, who Sorry, knows? Can I just got... say, Cookie, okay, yep. that what that Alison said, and by the way, everyone, get your questions in. There isn't many at the moment, so get your questions in for us because Cookie's going to ask some. City injured players is just mind games. They will be all, all be fit on Sunday, trust me. I already said that to him this morning. I said, I don't want to know who's out. Let's wait and say I don't care who's not trained because you know what goes on. It is total mind game. Sorry. Yeah, that's the, the, the thing as well that you make about that, Amanda, is is whenever it's the City players, that's that's all you ever hear. Oh, Arsenal yeah. didn't beat them with Rodri. Oh, Arsenal didn't beat them with De Bruyne. When we went there last season and we had no Saliba, no this one, no that one, you know, the game, like you said, the game at the Emirates this year, Saka didn't play. Okay, no. we still won it. But it it was never, oh, Arsenal have managed to beat Man City without Bakaya Saka. How amazing is that? And that that is what levels me as well. That grates me. Yeah, that's totally fair as well. I mean, a lot of people forget that we actually beat them with without Bakaya Saka. I mean, the guy that has played back-to-back -back 38 out of 38 Premier League games for us. So to be without your key man, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Um, and I think... You know, there's a lot of pressure as well, such a silly fact as well, but where Rodri hasn't lost a game at club or international level in a year, I mean, he'll <laughs> inevitably start this game. I mean, what, what a statement it would be if we beat them with, you know, a man mounting like him in the side as well. Uh, Melvin, we do have a few slight injury scares of our own. Um, it's all gone a bit quiet on that front. I believe Arteta's talking to the press mm -hmm. later today, so we should have a bit more clarity on it. Um, but at the time of recording this, uh, question marks over big Gabby at the back. Little Gabby at the front, Martinelli. And uh, who's the other one? Bakayo Saka, who withdrew from the England camp. So three big names there. Three names that would ordinarily be first players on the team sheet. Um, we could probably get by without one of those. But if we lose all three, that's going to be pretty detrimental, isn't it? Yeah, and if you're asking me who would be the biggest loss, 
I suppose, in, in my view, it'd be Gabriel at the back because our back four have been so good. Start, start moving our back four around against City. No, we we did that last year. We didn't want to do it and look where that left us. No, Gab, if he's fit, the other two, we get one of the other two in to play, it's a bonus. So, uh, you know, I'm... Um, uh, We'd love all three to play. All, you know, the biggest game of the season so far. And we've got the, the main, well, three very, very, very good players for us, potentially not being able to play. But hopefully that won't be the case. We have got people to put in their places. Not as good, but not that far behind as it was a year or two ago when we put the number 12 on or whoever it is. It made a big difference. We've got the Trossards of this world that on his day is terrific. He's got a good record against them as well, funnily enough. And we've got other players that can, can fit in there. So, uh, for me, it's Gabriel. Once, if he's in the back four, we keep it as it is, then I'm I'm not too worried. But Saka, I mean, I just... He hasn't been playing well all season. But even the games he hasn't been playing well, he's made a contribution. And we cannot... You know, you, you just love the guy. He just... You know, he's, he, he's just... I think he's up this game the last... Um, few months anyway he's changed his style a little bit he doesn't stick his bum out all the time now and wait to get tackled he's on the move the whole time and that makes it so difficult for defenders to get near him now no it's a shame that martinelli i thought was only a gash on the foot or something when he came off mm. it's been weeks i don't understand that don't understand that but as you say amanda we haven't heard anything so we've got to fear the worst we would melvin though <laughs> Because that's our real, isn't it? <laughs> but also, I mean, maybe what's we should look at on? it from the perspective of, you know, that's maybe good news. You know, we haven't heard anything. You know, we've not heard any, you know, really bad news. We know that, uh, you know, Gabriel um, withdrew from Brazil. Uh, Martinelli was never going away with Brazil in the first place. Um, Jesus never went away. I mean, the good good thing is about the international break, uh, this most recent one, is that we have had a lot of players that have remained at London Corny, the likes of Tommy Asu, Thomas Partey, that previously went away with their international teams and picked up injuries. So for those guys to stay at home, to work on their rehabilitation, to to be fresh and fit for our biggest game of the season, if we are missing players, at least we've got guys like that that are, are ready to come in. And how nice is it to be in a situation where we're potentially talking about Tommy Asu, Thomas Partey, Zinchenko, even Gabriel Jesus as kind of squad players that were first names on the team sheet last season that are now able to to come in potentially for a game of this stature. But for me personally, I'm going to be optimistic. I think that they're more precautionary more than anything. I think Saka coming out of England was very much, you know, this these games are pointless. Let's just get him out of there. The same for Gabriel. He had source to sell, James. Exactly. He did. He did indeed have source to sell. I don't know if anyone's tried that. I'm really itching to get my hands on that. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, it's it's a little bit of a worry, but I'm 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 very optimistic that all of those guys will be okay. The only one that I'm I'm a little bit 50-50 on is Martinelli, just because, like you say, Melvin, gash on the foot. It's been strung out for a little bit, um, but touch wood, he's all good to go. Um, at this point in the show, I'm going to come to each of you and you're going to tell me your team lineup. So, Chris, what are you going with? <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm glad I get to go first because whoever goes last is going to be like, yeah, what they said. <laughs> um, I think it'll be what I would like to see is Raya, Raya in goal. I think Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, and then Kivior as my back four. I think you have to do. I actually quite like the idea of Jorginho and um, have um, have uh, Rice uh, sitting as a bit of a double pivot because I think Man City are going to come at us. They're going to try and press hard. They they're not going to adopt the same tactics as last year and go long. Um, they're going to try and play through us. I think. Um, so then you've got your trio or your your front three, I think, well, I think we'll then go Havertz. I think you've got Erdegaard. I think Havertz, I'd, I'd play Havertz up top. I'd play Erdegaard right eight. Saka, if he's fit, on the wide right. And I'm assuming, I bet Martinelli's going to be back, so I'm going to say Martinelli. I think he's going to be back. We have got I a couple of questions if you want to answer. I've got one from Carl saying Kai or Jesus up front against City. And then Angela's said, who would you start on Sunday between Georgie or Partey? So we could answer those questions. Well, they're very easy to answer. Havertz and Jorginho, done. Yep. Yeah, yeah I agree. Really That's really what I would. Then, does either of you boys disagree? Both the City lads, when they play against City, 
are too emotionally involved. Amanda, do you yeah. remember the semi-final that we went to against City together? Where me and you both said about Welbeck, he's trying to do too yeah. much because he wants to be the yeah. one that bangs the Manchester. That's what they, they get too emotionally involved, Sinchenko and him. So I would have him on the bench. I mean, James, you make a great point about all the players that are coming back and everything a few minutes ago. The players that are on the bench are just as important now as the ones that are coming on starting because last season when we had to rely on what was on the bench, that couldn't get us over the line. So now these ones that are there, any little incremental kind of minutes that they play, they have to have just as good as an impact as the ones that come on and start. Um, for me, I'm exactly the same as Chris, although I think Martinelli will not start and Trossard will. Yeah, so do I. And I don't mind Martinelli coming on as a sub like he did in the home game for that last 20 minutes and running them ragged, especially where he's been caged up you know, I hope Martinelli's actually been in a cage and they've been prodded him with a stick, winding him up all week before they let him loose. You know, a bit like Monk in Mean Machine. I hope he comes yeah, out there swinging. It's an interesting point you make there, mate, because I actually forgot that when we did play City at home, Martinelli was the guy that came off the bench and just changed the dynamic of that game. So when we played City at the Emirates, no Saka and no Martinelli. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I know he came off the bench, but... Still, to go and beat them at home and be as dominant yeah. as we were. When they're, when they're going to be like that, trying to press and press us, you bring Martinelli on late. David Rea as a goalkeeper, we've seen it a couple of times. He's launched the ball quick out to him or he's pinged it long. Martinelli's took it down and run. I'm telling you that, with the last 20 minutes to go at the Etihad, they'll brick themselves. And on the topic of David Rea, this is the perfect time to mention our sponsor, Roof Beck Arts. And look at that wonderful piece of artwork you can get there. For those listening uh, on audio platforms, this is a wonderful illustration of our fantastic keeper, David Rea, making that penalty save in the Champions League. But the fun doesn't stop there. You can get Arsenal temporary tattoos. Lots of fun for the kids or the adults if you're feeling a little bit, uh, you know, like connecting with your inner child. Um, very, very nice. And... Pick of the bunch, my pick of the bunch at least, Arsenal mystery goodie bags. I mean, who wouldn't want one of those for Easter, eh? I'd rather have those than amazing, one of those chocolate isn't eggs. Isn't she, James? She's just amazing. Her That drawing of Raya is so fabulous. She's also given us a code, a 10% off. If you just give me two seconds, I think it's thank you. So if you go to roofbeckart.com and put in thank you, you will get 10% off all her work. And that's just only a minuscule amount of what she does do. Is that code all one word, Amanda, or is there a space? Let me have a look. E? She did, yes. Capitals, thank you, at the checkout to get the discount, all uppercase and one word. And is that on Etsy or Etsy. anywhere else? Etsy. So make sure you go and check out Roof on Etsy. And thank you, as always, to Roof for being a part of this wonderful podcast. Um, Melvin, I'll come to you, mate, because I don't think we heard your team line up. Is there anything that you would be looking to change from what the other guys have said? No, not at all. Not at all. Let's hope that that is the... They're all fit because that has to be the team. It's the team that's got us where we are the last few months. And this, you know, why change anything? And as you say, we've got people to come off the bench at any time. Jesus, I forgot. I actually forgot about him. Well, I was saying about Trossard. I mean, Jesus can take Saka's place very easily on the right side or even on the left for Martinelli if need be. That's the start as well. So, no, I, I, that first 11 for me has got to be. For me, I'll be very happy if uh, Arteta picks that team. Yeah, me too. And Amanda, one player I do want to quickly highlight, um, Jakob Kivior. You know, we're talking about a guy that we I think we all want to see start in this game. I certainly do. I know people have said about Tommy Asu coming back in. He's a great one-on-one -on -one defender. A I, 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 yeah, well, on, on the note of that question, do we throw Tommy in instead of Kivior? Absolutely not. Uh, for me, Kivior has been impeccable. And he's been a massive part of this run that this Arsenal team has been on. He's played a huge game for Poland uh, against Wales um, in a Euro qualifier. So, you know, I think he's got the minerals, the credentials to to be a part of a game of this stature, to go to a place like the Etihad and be unfazed and do what he does best. And I just think it's so good for him to have come on leaps and bounds because he wasn't really getting a look in in the first half of the season. But now he's he's a fundamental part of this team, isn't he? Yep, and as Gentile said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it and all that. I would keep Kivior. I would probably maybe bring Tommy back maybe on Wednesday against Luton, but I don't generally change a winning side. And and, and isn't it far, <clears throat> funny, just going back to Jorginho, how far we've come that we all want Jorginho to start and 
no one's even spoken about party. We would rather have Jorginho and Rice because it's working so well. Jorginho with his confidence, his professionalism, his experience, and he will keep it calm. And that's exactly what James was saying about Welbeck. And it was like, I, I'll never forget as well, Erdegaard against Spurs when he just signed his contract that week. He went like a lunatic for 20 minutes and, and it ruins it. They need to keep calm on Sunday. But yeah, let, let's keep with Kivior. I think he's uh, he's growing into it and we need that because Tommy Asu, unfortunately, is uh, injury prone. So we do need to uh, keep Tommy on the bench. You never know. We might bring him on Sunday afternoon. You guys like to say, Melvin? Yeah. Who would have thought at the beginning of this season, we're away to City and we're quite relaxed that Jesus is not playing for us, Chuchenko's not playing for us, yeah. and um, and Tommy's not playing for us, and Parsi's not playing for us. We're like, bothered. Where it's That's how the, the squad has evolved. You would have thought that if you said at the beginning of the season, no, we don't need those players against City, they'd have gone, no, no. Do you actually know what you're talking about? But it's that's where we are. So I'm very happy about that. Can I just jump in on that? Just just as a um, for posterity. So the team last season, I'll just read out the team from last season. It's quite interesting that we've just we've just talked that through. Aaron Ramsdale, well, he won't be there. Gabriel will. Rob Holding, he won't be there. Ben White, he'll be there. Thomas Partey on the bench. Granite Xhaka, he won't be there or from the start. Sinchenko, he won't be there from the start, I don't think. Saka, Odegaard, Jesus and Martinelli, we've got question marks on. That's literally like six of last te- the team that started last year that might not or might be on the bench or not starting. I just think, I think that's really, really interesting how far we've come. And you don't, you don't think about that, do you? Well, it was interesting in either one of the games against uh, Brentford or Porto. I remember mm. looking over at the bench and seeing Jesus, Partey and Zinchenko warming up and thinking, God, this time last year, if you guys weren't in the team, we would be in big, big trouble. But now we just are totally unreliant on them. And it's, you know, a huge credit to the likes of Jorginho, Kivior, the players that we looked at at the start of the season as the squad guys that are now the first 11. I think it's just absolutely fantastic that these players are just evolving. And especially for someone like Jorginho, who a lot of people are saying has no legs. He's in the twilight zone of his career. Um, I think he's playing some of the best football he's ever played. And I've said it before, that's down to Declan Rice being in the team, allowing him to kind of do what he does best, roam freely, make those intricate passes. And you've got, you know, a, a brilliant midfielder like Declan Rice to mop up. Um, but last point I want to make just before we go on to the questions, JJ, is we have a, a, a big squad now. And like Amanda says, you don't want to change a winning team, but we do also have to be realistic with the amount of games you've got coming up. When you've got a game like Luton at home, for example, and you've got players like Partey, Tommy Asu, Zinchenko, uh, Gabriel Jesus that, that are options. I'm not saying you should throw all of those in at once, but to use one, two to maybe make substitutions a bit earlier, uh, in the game, we we have to start using the squad more, don't we? Yes. However, I I believe our manager's biggest strength is also his biggest weakness, a bit like Arsene Wenger's, and that's his trust. And there are sadly some of those players that you've mentioned that can you trust them, and in an intense game state, and when you've potentially got two trophies on the line. And that's the thing for me is that I think Arteta, again, it's a strength, but also a weakness. He could potentially burn out certain individual players because they are more reliable than those options that are on the bench. But like we've just spoke to caveat that, nobody saw this from Kivior. Nobody saw this from, like you said, Jorginho. So for all that I'm saying about Zinchenko, they could come back. They could be like a dog with two dicks and we're talking about how great they are again. So, you know, anything, anything could happen. It's, it's, it's if, buts and maybes. So we just got to wait and see. I'm backing all of them, James. You know, I don't like coming onto all the various podcasts that I do because I do pimp myself out there. Um, and I don't, I don't like having to go, oh, Sinchenko again, what's this guy do? I don't like having to do that. But sadly, I say it as I see it. And when he does stuff in front of me that is completely stupid, I've got to call it out. And let's not forget, we've got Yuri and Timber around the corner as well. So it's, exactly. uh, it, yeah, it's, it's all looking rosy. So 
for the last part of the show, we're going to be taking your questions. So if you do want to throw some in the chat box just for the last 15, 20 minutes, uh, do let us know. But let's start with that ever-present question from uh, your wonderful fiance Amanda, Carl Stark. Who's going to win the league? Oh, we Would anyone like to answer it? <laughs> well, when we, win no. on when we win on Sunday, it's going to be us. Everyone's gone very quiet. Yeah. Um, so, so thanks for the question, Carl, but I think <laughs> no one wants to answer it. <laughs> okay. I'll talk to you. Talk to you in about a month's time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Let, let's get a few games under our belt. The last we got ten. Okay. Let's uh, let's go. Let's wait till the last four, four or five before we start getting uh, seen in the future. I just I don't want to think about it. I genuinely don't want to think How about it. I'm not nervous booked... about Sunday, but I'm you... nervous about well, thinking about the league. Have you that booked the sense. Wembley Marriott yet, Melvin? <laughs> no, not yet. No. <laughs> no, I didn't get my money back from last year, did I? <laughs> Cool. I, I would love us to be a Wembley. That'd be on my birthday as well. If we won the oh, Champions League, oh, then. Wow. oh, oh yeah, my that, god, that, that, that'd be. You one know the, the stress if we get there. If we're going to get tickets, I mean that. I just don't. I'd rather have the stress, but yeah, you know what I mean. Spend all day at Brent Cross, eh? Do a bit of shopping, <laughs> I will, and then go on to the final. <laughs> have a bit of chicken soup, Mel, and then we'll go off yeah, to the lovely. game. <laughs> lovely, lovely stuff. Uh, another question from Cole Stock, Chris. I'll give you this one. Uh, Liverpool, Brighton before our game. Um, it's at Anfield, so I'm expecting a Liverpool win. Uh, but they only have one win in their last eight matches against them. Yeah, I can't say anything else other than Liverpool win. I think Brighton's form is patchy, uh, to be generous at best. I think the European campaign has impacted them very in and outside this season. They're not the same as they, they were last season. And I do think that Liverpool will have enough against them. Um, it's those home games. Liverpool's record at home uh, in against in all competitions is pretty good. So I'm not really expecting them to drop any points at home. It's the away ones where we need Liverpool to drop points if we're going to see them fall away. And I felt like they were going to fall away for quite some time. And I feel like lots of other lots of other fans have, have said that oh Liverpool will fall away. They've got too many games, but they seem to have just sort of kept plugging away, kept plugging away, kept getting results. And so now they're in a position where. I don't think they're going to drop many more points. We need them to drop maybe, we need them to maybe lose one, hopefully two, or draw a couple. But I don't see that happening this weekend against Brighton. No. No, it's frustrating with Liverpool, isn't it? Because they are plucking away. And you do annoyingly, I think you have to credit them, given their injuries, to have yeah. you know, the likes of Connor Bradley come through, Bobby Clark, these guys that have just come out of absolutely nowhere and are doing the business for them. I mean, prime example is that game against Nottingham Forest where they, they got the win in the very last minute of the match, you know, through some rather fortunate officiating, but still, they're getting the points on the board. Um, next one from Fiona Scott, JJ. I'll give you this one. Do you think we will win the league if we get a win on Sunday? 100%. Lovely. Anything else to add? Just, just my me like Amanda said, momentum and confidence. Uh, it's... it's uh, you got a, it's like in stages uh, where you overcome certain hurdles and that then gets you to your next big goal and i think you know a lot of people talked about oh look at the way they went after we won the community shield you only won it on penalties and it's a glorified friendly and everything but arteta said it's not just this game it's these players mentally knowing that they have beaten man city whether it's on penalties or not They've overcome Man City. And again, to beat them at their patch, which we haven't done, like we said, since 2015, it's, it's humongous. It's massive. And that, I believe, will put the momentum on to carry us on to win the league. And like I said earlier, nine consecutive victories. We're on eight. So that makes it nine. Every time we've done that, we've won the league. So, yeah, it's in the bank if we win. 100%. Absolutely. Very well said. Uh, Melvin, I'll come to you with this one from Robert Stevens. If Martinelli isn't fit, is there more of an argument to start Jesus on the left wing? Yes, I think there is, most certainly, yes. I mean, he will probably play Trossard there, I think, uh, because he normally does when Martinelli doesn't play. But I, for one, would have uh, Jesus. I'm not that bothered about uh, Trossard because he's a very, very good player and he, and he pops up, as we saw the other week, against Porto in big games. But listen, it's a great... It's a great worry to have, you know, Jesus or Trossard. You know, we normally have no one to come on, with all due respect. Now we've got two very, very good players to come on, if Martinelli. But I would just, to answer the question, I'd just go for Jesus, yeah. 
And Amanda, I'll come to you on this one because I know you love talking about the officials. Are we worried <laughs> about uh, Jared Gillett on VAR? <sighs> I, I did see this question and I was like, I really hadn't really thought about it. And then I saw it and I thought, look, every game, there's some controversy for every team. All I'll say is this, as long as they're fair and and that's all you can ask. And you can only hope that on Sunday they are fair. Uh, it's not something I've concerned myself with because it's part of the game now. It's like an added thing we have to play against. It, it just bores me. Um, it is what it is. We can't change it. So we just, it's like literally having to beat 12 men, isn't it? Let's not think about it. No, Fingers crossed, crossed they're on you our just, side. You, you just got to be so good that you don't bring them into the equation, which I think we're, we're, we're more. We're, just as much as we're capable of doing it, City are capable of doing it as well. You know, for me, we had worse refereeing standards back when we done the, you know, we went the whole season unbeaten. So as long as you don't bring them into account, mm. you haven't got to worry about them. So just, just just play our game as best we can in the, in the you know, confines of the game. Amanda said it earlier, just remain as calm as possible. Don't get drawn in with certain things, which is like I said, don't play overly emotional players. And, uh, yeah, go there and get the result. Well said, mate. Very well said. Um, Chris, I'll come to you on this one. Another one from the fabulous Carl Stark. Uh, actually, I'll answer it first. Um, and the answer is yes. Should Jorginho be offered a new contract at the end of the season? Absolutely. Absolutely, he should. Um, but, yeah, Chris, what are your thoughts on that one, mate? Yeah, it's the when they did the deal last year, There was it was an 18-month with a plus one on the end, wasn't it? So I think you'd, Arsenal just need to activate that plus well, one. I, I, think, I think he deserves a whole new contract for me. Like, I, I would still be doing a one plus one, but I think, you know, just, just have another look at that, you know, just whether it's wages or whatever. I think he... He deserves something fresh. And I think that's why this is maybe being drawn out because Arsenal would rather give him a new deal than mm. just that simple, you know, going to activate it. You're going to stay here. I think he needs to be rewarded because he has been, he's just been flawless. It's, apart from the Spurs game, he's been flawless. Yep, absolutely. And do you know what's interesting as well? I think there were some quotes that have come out over the last couple of days from his agent saying, you know, Italy, you know, maybe one day, but he's, he's happy at the moment. I think, it's almost a bit as a play it sort of month by month with Jorginho at the moment. I think he's very happy in the environment at Arsenal. And I think we need to capitalise on that. Like you said, James, if we get him down, so we say to him, look, you can have a one year next year and we'll do a plus one extension on that as well. Uh, maybe that's a two plus one, actually, because he'd almost be like, that's, well... That's what he wants, a... Chris, isn't it? They've said yeah. that he we're offering him a one and then a roll in. But he wants yeah. a two. He wants two guaranteed, and then a one rolling. I say give yeah. him the two because he will still retain some kind of value. He, he, yeah. could easy, he could easily still go to the MLS, even when he's like what thirty three or whatever. Still tick the game about and do something there. He what is he now? Thirty two. Yeah. Thirty two now, he isn't he? He can so. go. He can go to Italy, play over there, like you said. Or if he wants to, I know he's talked about. He really wants to go and play one year in Brazil as well. They'll easily. You could. You. You won't make a profit on the guy, but you'll still make money on him. Yeah, he's, a good, like, he's a good enough yeah, name to make you some kind of money. And the benefit of a plus one, you, you do a two years, you say, well, next year, and then you've got another year on top of that, which we would have activated anyway if we'd have done a one plus one. So you're just you're just confirming it. And then you get to the end of the two years, so at the end of next season, the season after, you end up just saying, okay, well, fine, well, we just won't activate the plus one. So it's sort of the same sort of thing if you do a one plus one as opposed to doing a two plus one. You just don't activate it. Yeah, and I don't think there's any that harm in it either because or, or, you know, let's say we do give him a two-year deal. Okay, his his wages will probably be some of the higher ones at the club. Um, but given that we paid such a fairly you know minuscule transfer fee for him, I don't think it's too much of an issue. And like you say, JJ, we, we have that ability to sell him in the future if he's not getting minutes. We won't we definitely won't make profit on mm. him. But if we're looking at, you know, a three, four, five million pound transfer fee to, to Italy, to Brazil, to the MLS, wherever, that's not going to be a problem. And unlike, you know, some players that we've struggled to shift in the past, Jorginho doesn't come with any baggage. You know, he's he's always reliable, more or less. He, he doesn't have any injuries. Uh, brilliant attitudes model professional, wants to be a coach. He ticks all the boxes for any sort of club, so I don't think we'll have issues if we need to get him off the books at some point in the future. I don't see that being a problem. Um, it's, what he does, it's what he does in the dressing room as well, James. It is, all, absolutely. all the young players constantly talk about him. Well, look, look, at, look at how Declan Rice talks about him. 
exactly. You know, also, another point about him, we've forgotten that we probably won't have party next year if we to believe what we, we're reading. So we definitely need someone like that to stay with the club. And we might have to bring in another midfielder anyway. Absolutely. But for a bit of consistency, we, sh we cannot afford to let both of them go next season and have Rice play with a new partner without bedding someone in. So I think it's very important we give him another contract. Yep, couldn't agree more. And last question to round up on. Uh, I really like this one. Uh, Amanda, I'll start with you and then we'll go around everyone. What one player would you choose to score the winner on Sunday? So picture the scene. It's been a really, you know, difficult game at the Etihad. It's been a real stalemate. Sides, uh, both sides have had limited chances. Who's going to pop up? Far post, bullet header in the 97th minute. I'd love Benny Blanco to score. I really would. After all the abuse he's taken, obviously not from Arsenal fans, over this England debacle. And I actually defended him on LinkedIn and had a row with a, an England fan about this because no one actually knows what's gone on, whatever. But just to, to narrow it down, Benny Blanco, 89th minute and uh, stuff you, Southgate. Lovely stuff. Chris, for you? Well, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, it's hard to look beyond that. But just for, I guess, uh, the sake of difference, to give a different opinion, how about Gabriel Jesus against his old club <laughs> stepping up and being like, you let me go and now join these guys and we'll go and take your title off you, thanks. Oh, very nice. We've had two very good shouts so far. What are you going for, JJ? I'll be different. Uh, I will go for Kai Havertz. Yeah. I think he would be my you can sing the song. Um, That's what it is. Well, it? it's the song, but also if he done that like knee slide with his arms out celebration again, like he's been doing, I think that would be everybody's like lock screen or header for quite Go a few. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Amanda's got it right. If Ben White scores and then lifts off his shirt and he's got like an Uno card underneath on a vest. <laughs> oh, that's no, no, you know what would be funny, James? If he had like a Scotland top on or something. <laughs> or, if he had, been... or if he had that new St. George, that would... Oh, oh my God. that's it. The new St. George that everyone's gone mad about. But my yeah. second choice would be Havertz. And the reason being, so the weigh-in could sing it for hours on end. Don't leave the Etihad and just keep singing it because it is the best song we've got. And Melvin, to end on? I think, yeah, great, great call for Ben White. But I have to be different. I would love to see for his celebration, especially against Porto, if he was to score the winner, and I love him as a player, Saliba. Yeah, he's my pick as well. Yeah. Oh, I would just be unbelievable because he would go mental. You know that. His arms are everywhere. He, Tongue he out. Seems to, yeah, he seems to lose. Uh, he's such a calm player, but when he scores a goal, he seems to lose it. And I love well, it. Even when he doesn't score, Melf. Yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I want to say. I love watching him. He'd, he'd take the corner flag play. out and be like Anglish Young from ACDC, <laughs> wouldn't he? He'd be going, yeah. 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 <laughs> I would be doing yeah, that. To the be state, fair, yeah. he'd have that much adrenaline. To be yeah. fair, though. Do we care who scores the winning goal? No. I couldn't care less if it is a Rodri own goal. I couldn't care less as long as we get the three points and win because I think that makes our Easter Sunday amazing. Lovely stuff. And that's a beautiful note to end on. So thank you to everyone that has tuned in to the Same Odd Arsenal podcast on this good Friday morning, the start of what should hopefully be a fantastic long Easter weekend. Um, JJ, thank you ever so much for coming on, mate. Please do check out uh, LL Cool James 91 on Twitter, the James Johnston football channel. And uh, Melvin as well, thank you ever so much for coming on, mate. Make sure to, uh, to give Melvin a follow uh, across the various social media outlets. And of course, thank you to my wonderful co-hosts, Chris and Amanda, for making this all possible. Anyone else have any final thoughts to add before we go? We need to do predictions because it's got to go in my book. Oh, the book. I thought the book had gone. No, all right. it's all there. All said to you now, Burn the book. Burn I'm, the book. No, we're not burning we the are. book because this proves everything we've said the whole season. I've written it all down. Go on, okay, well, well we know we know Melvin's gone a 2 0. What are you going right, with? So Melvin's gone 2 0. Yeah, I've gone 2 0. Oh, I'm going 0 0. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't expect that. Chris. I'm sorry, one nil city. Oh my god. Okay. So that's one nil. And LL Cool J. 
Oh, it's head versus heart, but I'm going to go with heart. I'm going to go 2-1 Arsenal. So it's 1-2 for my book. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris, 1-0 to City. James, you've gone for a 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, LL Cool J, you're going 2-1 Arsenal. Melvin, you're going 2-0 Arsenal. Yep. Yep, sorry, I put zero the other way. And I'm going 2 all. Well, let's hope Chris isn't right. That's it. That's the only one. <laughs> yes, me yeah. too. Me too. Look, Chris really from Alison. Um, are we all done now, um, Cookie? Yeah, see us out, Amanda. Okay, so we, well, myself and Chris, um, myself and Cooks are back on Sunday post game. Whatever the score, we have decided we're going post game 10, 15, 20 minutes later. Please come and join us. We will be live. And please, God, it's one of those pods that we've had recently where we're happy. That's it. That, that's all we want. Enjoy Good Friday, everyone. Thanks for all joining us, especially everyone on audio. Go check out Ruth Beck. Our happy Easter, everybody. Let's hope it is excellent oh. at the Yeti had. Oh, come on. That's good for me because I'm not normally funny. Um, happy Easter. Enjoy. Come on the Arsenal. And remember, always Arsenal. Yeah.